Okra is one of my favorite things to grow in the garden. Today we're going to talk about strategies and tips on why you should be growing okra in your food garden. Did you know okra is originally from Africa and it grows wild there? That only makes sense why it grows so well for us in the deep south because we have similar type climates, hot and dry. Okra loves hot weather and it tolerates dry weather and it is in the mallow family which is the same family that roselle is in. Roselle is an edible hibiscus. Now with roselle it flowers real similar to what okra does but after it flowers it puts on a seed pod and we harvest that red capsicum that covers the seed pod. With okra after it flowers then it puts on a seed pod and that's what we harvest and cook is the seed pod, which is what we call okra. And cotton is also in the mallow family and kin to okra. Look here, the leaves are somewhat similar, but the blooms on the okra and the cotton are almost identical. And when cotton grows up and puts those blooms on, it puts a bowl on, and that's where our cotton comes from, is inside that bowl. So the growing characteristics of okra and cotton are very similar. Now let's talk about different varieties of okra. The one I planted this year is cowhorn. Cowhorn's an old heirloom variety that's grown a lot out in Louisiana, Mississippi. I hadn't grown it in a few years, but it is a good variety. Uh, it has some shortcomings for me. I grew it this year because I just hadn't grown it in a long time. I wanted to grow it again. Cowhorn, if you're gonna grow big okra, it's probably the one for you. It is more forgiving and it can get bigger and not quite as tough as some of the other varieties. The most popular variety out there is Clemson Spineless. Now Clemson Spineless, as you guess, was developed by Clemson in South Carolina in 1939. And if you talk to anybody about growing oak in the garden, probably they're going to mention Clemson Spineless. It's the most popular variety grown. Uh, a new variety that's just been out the last few years is called Jambalaya. Now Jambalaya is a hybrid, and as far as I know, it's the only hybrid okra on the market. And it was developed to be more productive and to be cut at a shorter stage. Jambalaya is a good one. Now Jambalaya to me seems to be more root knot nematode resistant than some of the old heirloom varieties such as cowhorn. It's way more productive, but if it gets to this stage right here, it's not edible. So it's not as forgiving. With jambalaya, you got to cut it on a regular basis to get that choice productive okra out of it. You can't let it go long, an extra day or so, or it's gonna get too tough on you. So jambalaya's got its place. It's probably one of my favorite varieties. Also, it's gonna make or produce at least two weeks earlier than any of these other varieties. And then we have a lot of the, what I call novelty varieties, such as red burgundy and jing orange. Those two are red okras. Now I like the red okras and I grow them. They're very, they're very good for me. They produce well, and they do good, but I do classify it as a novelty type okra. And both of those are red. And then we have some of the older heirloom varieties, such as emerald, and we have star of David, some of those unique varieties there. But uh, jambalaya definitely works into my rotation every year as I love that variety right there. It's way more productive and it's one of my favorite ones. Now you guys that don't have a lot of room that want to do container gardening, we got a new variety this year that's worked out really good for growing in small spaces. Green Fingers is the variety. And it's more of a dwarf right here. See, it doesn't get very big. We grew this in a root pouch right here, a big root pouch here. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think there's eight plants in here. And believe it or not, we harvest a decent amount of okra off of this root pouch. Got some right here I'm gonna show you. Now, one thing I've noticed about it is you need to cut it a little bit on the small side because it will get tough. Look how nice and green that pot is. The three major pests for okra are, number one, aphids. If you see ants on your okra plant trailing up and down, more than likely you got an aphid problem. Those ants are guarding the aphids because the ants are feeding on the byproduct of the aphids. So therefore, that's a good sign you got an aphid problem. Aphids are gonna live underneath the leaf on your okra plants. Now they're easy to control. You want to use an insecticide 
and you want to spray underneath the leaf where the aphids are. Any insecticide will pretty much knock out aphids. They're a soft body insect. You can use something like neem oil, horticulture oil, or even dishwashing detergent to, uh, to kill the aphids. Very easy to control. Probably not the, a major pest, but they're definitely a pest of okra. Number two, stink bugs or true bugs. Now, I don't have any damage right now, but I'm gonna tell you what it looks like. Stink bugs will actually pierce their mouth part into the okra and you'll see bumps on that okra. If you've ever harvested okra and you got those bumps on there, that is from stink bug damage. Stink bugs are harder to control. You're gonna use, need to use something a little more powerful because they are not a soft body insect. Bug Buster 2 will do it and that's what I recommend for spraying for uh, stink bugs. Number three is probably the most troublesome, root knot nematodes. One of the worst pests on okra's root knot nematodes. Okra's notorious for having nematode problems. See how pretty this plant is? Well, right down the road right here, it gets to looking bad on me. You see how yellow it is right here and the plants are going down? Yep, I've got a nematode problem. So my okra plants start yelling, going downhill, become non-productive, and the reason why is root knot nematodes. You see they're, they're all over the root system right there. So there's not a whole lot you can do about this right here. Now I'll make a note that I've got this problem in this plot and I'll use some mustard in the winter time there to incorporate in to help gas up and to help with this right here. There's also a product out there that Monterey makes that's called Nematode Control and you apply it where you got nematodes the problem is it wipes out all nematodes good and bad and then you have to go back and reintroduce the good nematodes that's just a bit much for me so the way i manage my root knot nematodes in my okra is with succession planting i will plant me another crop behind this one to come in to keep us in okra producing okra all summer long by using succession planting well, you may be asking yourself, well, am I still gonna have this problem? And the answer is yes. Once the okra gets older, then the root knot nematode gets to be such a problem that the plant does not produce. And that's where these younger plants are going to produce the okra. And as those younger plants get older and get this problem here, then we'll have another crop behind it coming along. So the younger okra plants don't have as much infestation of the root knot nematodes and produce okra. But as they get older, this becomes a huge issue and keeps them from producing. So the key here is having a plant coming along all along so that we have okra all the way till frost. Let's talk about when to harvest and grades of okra. As far as the way you grade okra, this right here is considered extra fancy. And this normally brings the most money. As you can see, the okra is smaller and it takes more to fill up a bucket. So that's the reason it costs more because it takes more okra to fill up a, a bushel. So we got extra fancy. The next one is fancy. And fancy is probably my choice of when I cut okra. I love this length right here. Fancy is the next highest price okra cut. And then from there, we move into choice. This is what I call a small choice, and this is what we consider choice grade here. For the most part, these choice grades don't bring near as much as the fancy and extra fancy does. The exception of this is out in Louisiana and Mississippi. People that have grown this cow horn variety for years, they like them larger. But over here on the East Coast, everything is judged pretty much on fancy and extra fancy. And if you're growing for market, that's where you want to cut your okra at and harvest it is in the extra fancy and fancy stage. The fancy stage to me is real tender and I get more of it. So that's my favorite grade is the fancy. Now some tips on brewing okra. Okra does not like cool soils and they will not germinate in cool soils. So my first planting in the springtime, I grow from transplants. Our 162 tray is ideal for growing okra transplants and we get really good germination. If you plant okra seed too early in the spring in cool soils, it will not germinate. Now after we move out of spring by our transplants, then we can direct seed into the garden after that, after our soil temperature warms up. So if you're growing okra already, stay on top of your succession planting. 
And if you're not, try growing okra for the first time. I think you'll like it.